everybody. I'm going to talk today about installing these modular closets. This is um, a product from modularclosets.com. Um, I found this product online watching a YouTube video. A gentleman installed a closet for his stepfather. It was a surprise for him. Uh, they look pretty, pretty nice. So got on the website for modularclosets.com and I emailed over uh, the dimensions of my closet and with within within a day's time I got an email back from uh, a gentleman there at Modular Closets named Eli Black uh, by the end of that day he had sent me a design for the closets um, pretty nice product uh, all three quarter inch plywood uh, wrapped in some sort of melamine uh, some sort of foiling or something I'm not exactly sure what's on it uh, basic modular closet units but very nice simple but nice uh, easy to install but a couple things that I wanted to just talk about was the um, installation obstacles that I ran into just to make things a little bit easier so I'm gonna go over a couple of those things quick hopefully this will be helpful for you and uh, make your installation a little bit simpler than it really already is so um, again the assembly is very simple um, I'm going to say when you put in your, your cam screws, you definitely don't want to over screw those cam screws. What happens is um, the cam nut will not catch the shoulder of that cam screw if you over screw that, uh, that particular uh, cam post. So don't over screw that cam post. I'm calling it a cam screw. It's actually the cam post in the direction. Don't over screw it. It's that those little pieces here that screw into the uh, into the side panel so that you can lock your your top shelf and your bottom shelves and your middle shelves um, and then these little cam nuts go over the cam um, post and lock them in place but again if you screw those cam posts too tight you won't be able to get that little cutout opening into the uh, into the hole and turn nice and tight. I actually broke one of them and bent another one until I realized I was snugging them up too tight. So you just want to bring them fairly snug to the surface of your material. Let's see. The other tip I want to give you is uh, you may have to cut these units to fit your particular space. They come in standard sizes 18, 24, 30, 36. They may not fit in your particular opening. So you may have to cut a couple inches off from, or maybe uh, three quarters of an inch, whatever it may be. What I found when I cut mine is these are the pieces that you have to cut. It's the top shelf, it's the bottom shelf, and on one of the taller units, which I'll show you soon, it's a middle shelf. So you only cut one end, which will shorten the, the width of the unit. But when you cut the end off, you're cutting off the holes where the um, where the cam posts go and where the dowels go so what you want to do what I found it was much easier to still have holes in these pieces top bottom and middle to line up my side panels to keep everything aligned and it was easier to screw together but again you cut this out you cut the holes out of here where these cam posts go it's really tricky to line it up so what I did was I took my, uh, my drill bit um, for the same size as the hole, mark the same size uh, with your bit, and I pre-drilled deeper, I pre-drilled these holes that were in here for these, for these uh, cam screws, I drilled them pretty deep, as deep as I could, and then I cut the edge off, and then I set the depth on my, on my drill for the length of the cam, the cam screw. Um, again, I hope I'm calling it the right thing, cam post, uh, set the depth on my drill bit for the cam post and re-drilled the hole in these top, bottom, and middle panels so that when I put my side panel back on, the cam post would, would have a hole to line up to and it would keep everything square and aligned. Obviously, you won't be able to use your cam nuts because you're cutting the cam holes out of here, but at least I would recommend you drill the sides, the edges, of these shelves so that you have something to line those cam uh, posts into and it will go together much easier so 
when you do have to cut these and you want to secure them together again, obviously the cam nut is missing. So what I did was I always pre-drill everything I, I do for woodworking. I always pre-drill. I pre-drilled a couple of a holes in the side panel going into the newly cut top bottom center shelf and I use these trim head square drive finish screws. They're much thinner than, than a sheetrock screw. You're less apt to, to split the sides and split the wood. It's a very thin screw here as you can see and uh, I just screwed my, my side panel back onto those newly cut top, center, and bottom shelving pieces there. Uh, actually works really well. Put, uh, I think, three on each side. Um, held it together nice. No, no issues there with uh, durability. Um, so that was, that was pretty simple. I'm cutting and fitting these things. Obviously, it takes a bit longer than actually assembling one that you don't have to cut. It's a couple more steps, but again, very simple process. And because it's three quarter inch plywood, um, it, it goes together. It's very forgiving. You're not splitting it. It's not particle board. You're, you're not making a mess out of it. It's, it's tight. The screws go in nice and tight. Um, and I haven't had an issue here. So um, let's see. As I said, make sure you always pre-drill, however, um, because it is this, this plastic, the uh, melamine type material. You don't want to split it or, or crack that. So make sure you use a small drill bit, maybe an eighth or three sixteenths, and, uh, and just pre-drill that before you put your screws in there. Uh, you don't want to have an issue and have to send a piece back. Um, as far as hanging the cabinets, a very simple process as well. Um, ideally, you want them at 84 inches at the top. I marked the line at 84 on my wall, measured off the floor, marked 84. I took a four foot level, marked the level line across the ceiling, and basically on the, on the double uh, units here, the double hanging units, they're 49 and a half inches long. So basically that leaves you with, um, let's see, 30, 34 and a half inches from the bottom to the floor. So I cut two, two I cut one, two by four into two pieces, 34 and a half inches long. And I placed them underneath the units. And what it did was it added a support, um, as you can see here, much easier to, to rest these on something and then screw them into the wall. So that was helpful if you're installing alone or even if you're installing with somebody, it keeps it at the correct height. Uh, you're not, it's not slipping down off the wall. You're not missing your mark. It gives you uh, perfect alignment to that 84 inches when you have a support underneath it as well. Um, this, this is the screw that they, they give you to install. It's got like a built-in washer into it, but it's got a Phillips head on it, and it's a very small Phillips type head, and it's a long screw. And what I found um, over the years of doing many projects around the house is any screw with a Phillips head, you tend to, to strip the head out of it. Uh, especially a long screw if you're going into a, a joist or a 2 by 4 or whatever it may be. So I didn't use these screws. Uh, I, I'm sure I would have blew the heads right off these things with my, my screw gun and, a, and a, a Phillips drill bit. So I actually went with a deck screw. Um, the deck screw has almost like a, a star head in it. Um, these screws come with uh, a bit so that you have the correct bit to screw these in with, and they're very durable. You will not strip the head out of these. Because there's no built-in washer, like on the screws that Modular Deposits gives you, I have these um, finishing washers I use when I install cabinetry. So I took a finishing washer, put it over the screw, and now I have a washer, and I'm not gonna strip, strip that screw out when I screw this cabinet into the wall. Makes it real easy, much easier than stripping out that that Phillips head screw that uh, that comes with these cabinets. So, you may want to go to your local home improvement store and pick up a box of deck screws. They come in a couple different colors, and you'll see them. They have the star heads on them. The uh, let's see, the other thing I have here is um, my drawers. I actually had one drawer. It's this one. You can't really see. It had a couple little nicks on the side of the drawer so I emailed Eli and um, within a couple days I had a new a new uh, drawer front their service by the way is absolutely incredible Eli's great to work with I'm sure everybody there is the same 
But um, within a couple of days at my, at my front porch, I had a new drawer head. Um, what I did, unfortunately, I got lazy and I didn't pre-drill the holes. See, these holes come pre-drilled in the back of the drawer, back of the drawer head. And these are for your drawer handles. These, these particular units come with a little T-handle, um, so you only need one hole. But it also comes with these two holes pre-drilled. They're 96 millimeters apart, which is pretty much your standard uh, handle on any pole that you'd buy at any local hardware store. I would strongly recommend, and again, I didn't do it on this one, and unfortunately, this is the new one that Eli sent me, so I'm living with the, the one with the chips on it. But take a drill bit, a small drill bit, before you put your handle on, whether it's the middle one or these two outers, and drill a very small, this is like a, this is a 3 16 inch drill bit. Drill a tiny little hole through there, and then get your bigger drill bit for the size screws you need for your handle. Find the hole you just drill in the front and then drill back through the front of the drawer. Reason for that is these drawer heads have like a, some sort of film on them, almost like a plastic coating with a very shiny film. And you can see, again, I got lazy and I didn't take the extra step to drill the hole with the smaller bit. And it actually, you can't probably see it, but it actually raised the material on this drawer head, this plastic cover or this whatever this vinyl cover is on the drawer head. And it actually mushroomed the material. So the material on this drawer head is actually pushing off of the, of the wooden head itself. So useless. I, I can't use it. Pre-drill. Uh, also, going back to when you install these, if you have a couple of these quick clamps, I recommend you use them. They're real handy. Um, when you put your two 2x4 two supports under here that we talked about, it's real handy to, to just sock up, sock up your clamp, hold them together, hold these two units together, keeps them nice and tight. Otherwise, you will have a little gap. While that clamp is still in place, I went ahead, there's two pre-drilled holes for each bar on each unit. In between the two pre-drilled holes for the bracket for the bar, I, I pre-drilled a, a small hole, again using a, a thin bit, and I took um, took another bit to, um, it's a counter countersink bit. And I just put a little countersink into the side of the unit, and I put an inch and a quarter screw, you can use a sheetrock screw for this, to hold these these two together. Otherwise, you're gonna have a little bit of a gap here. It's not gonna be tight. So clamp them, put a screw in here to hold the two units together, and did the same down here. And the reason why you do it behind the clamp is you you don't see it. You don't see that screw. The, the closet pole is gonna cover it, and it is, everything's gonna hold together nice and tight. Um, not that they wouldn't stay on the wall otherwise, but it keeps these two cabinets together. You can see this moves slightly. If I didn't have these screws in here, It'd be a little bit of a gap and it, and it flexes so um, I put a couple screws in there behind the poles you're never gonna see them um, worked out really well um, what else do I have here so what I have and I'll show you with the camera in just a moment oh lastly the bases these bases are they're like extensions for the uh, for the tower units um, I'll show you a better shot of that too in a moment, but if you're going to put those extensions on your towers, I suggest you put them on first. I waited because I wasn't sure that I wanted them on there. I thought maybe I'd like that floating look, but I ended up putting them on after the fact, which wasn't a big deal, but the great thing about it is, and we just did this closet. This used to be like part of a bath we had down here. Now it's a walk-in closet. It's not very big, but it's a decent size walk-in for our master bedroom. But I just finished this room, so I put the cabinets in first, and then I trimmed it out after. Um, you can actually leave your base trim up and still put these extensions on. The back of the extension has a three-quarter inch notch, and it's designed to go over your existing baseboard trim, so you don't need to take your baseboard off. I can show you that as well when I uh, show you the rest of the closet. So what I ended up with here was a 24-inch shoe shelf, a 27-inch tall hanging um, which is for, you know, longer clothes, dresses, a double hanging 36, a 30 inch drawer unit, which is this one, and a double hanging 30, which is this one. Um, 
all said and done, delivered tax, everything, it was $1,036.95. Um, I was actually going to build all these cabinets out of uh, uh, birch material. I was going to trim them out, make my own drawers, uh, but would have had to paint them. This was a great deal to me. Um, thousand dollars can't beat it I would have had a, probably close to that in materials plus I would have had to paint it install it don't get me wrong it's not custom but I tell you it looks pretty good I'm very happy with it um, I do really like finished carpentry and for somebody like me I'm pretty fussy I can live with this this is really nice I'm very happy with it I'm glad I made the move um, but that's about it again it's modularcloset.com and again I worked with Eli back he was awesome uh, I'm going to take the camera now and just show you what we have here, what I bought. Um, give you an idea, too. I think this room is about... So this room is about 7.5 by 8 feet. Um, I do have a little bump in over here. That's the other side of that wall is our half bath with our laundry room in it. So my stackable washer and dryers and that bump out. But I'll show you what uh, what this looks like. You'll notice too on the on the drawers, these are all solid wood drawers with uh, dovetail joints. Um, the other thing too to think about when you're doing these drawer heads or putting these drawers in, so you want to try to keep all the gaps between the drawers as equal as possible. Um, could be a little tricky. Some are off like an eighth, you know, somewhere in that range. They're not perfect, but you can get them much closer if you use these. Uh, mount holes on the slides rather than these you can see originally I used this one and this one and then one back here and this drawer was off a bit so once I was able to get it where I wanted it well I loosened up the screws got the drawer where I wanted it and then I just pre-drilled new holes on these slides that go up and down and I was able to easily address adjust the drawer much easier than using these uh, these fixed holes. In this case, see this one worked out pretty good. I didn't have to do anything to adjust it, but you definitely have adjustment and they, they do slide really nice. Um, again, real nice unit. This is the, uh, the 36, um, the double, they call it a double hanging unit. That's the 36. That one over there in the corner is the 27 and that is for uh, long hanging clothes, you know, dresses, whatever you may have, long jackets, robes. And then here um, I have the 24 inch tower. This is what we're going to use for for the shoes. Um, you can see there's a lot of space in there. It's a lot of shelving units. You can actually buy shelving, additional shelving packs if you do want more shelf uh, space in there. But um, I tell you, they're, they're very nice units. I'm very impressed with them. Um, happy we went with this, and I didn't spend, you know, two weekends, three weekends working on building something custom, and then having to paint it, and then having to install it. This worked out really well. You can see here. Um, see if I can get a picture of this here. You can see where the back of that unit is. How the extension is actually cut out three quarters of an inch. You know, it sits forward so that you can get your baseboard behind it. So. Again, I didn't realize that when I put these things up because I hadn't put the extensions on yet. So I did the, all the base trim first, and um, or I did it second actually afterwards. So I, I actually could have done it beforehand. So now I know if I ever do another one. But um, actually, like I say, great units. Very happy with them. Um, I'm going to post the, the website again. I'll try to put it on uh, my link here in YouTube. I'm, I'm not the most proficient... Uh, videographer here I only have a couple of videos on YouTube right now but um, if you have any questions hit me up on YouTube ask uh, ask away I'll be happy to answer whatever I can um, I have some other videos on on the website too so I'm gonna use this for some cheap advertising check out uh, Led Zeppelin tribute band my son's the lead singer they're awesome we're out of Connecticut but anyway again hit me up if you have any questions Put them down below. I'll answer whatever I can. And uh, I highly recommend these units. You won't be disappointed. Take care.